Welcome everybody back to Auburn Versus, Old Black Auburn News Sports Editor Mike Savetz here with Old Black Auburn News beat writer for Auburn University, Colin Nickel. And Colin, fresh out of Tommy Tupperville's press conference, depth chart was released today. Any surprises on the depth chart or was it what we thought it would be? Um, no real surprises. I mean, uh, Tommy said that Montez Billings wouldn't play. He's a, you know, was in the mix as a backup wide receiver behind Prashay Rodriguez. I would say on the, as far as the official depth chart goes, that's, you know, not really a surprise that he's not listed there. Uh, Chaz Ramsey, the true freshman, is listed as the backup at right guard. That's more of a measure of convenience. I think if Mike Berry gets hurt, Leon Hart would probably suck it up right. and get in there. But as is, you know, he's probably not going to play in this game. Uh, Brad Lester for now is listed as the starting tailback. Uh, I think it's interesting that the coaches have named a starter at every single position, including punter, but haven't said who their number one tailback is going to be yet. And, and every day that goes by, it gets a little more interesting. Tommy had an opportunity today to commit to Brad as a starter and didn't. So, you know, I think that's something that Auburn fans should keep an eye on going into Saturday's game. Yeah, they have a, a good stable of running backs. Uh, Tristan Davis hurts, is hurt, of course, and Carl Stewart's going to be back at the fullback slot. But very intriguing that he did not say that Carl is our guy. He said it could change. And right now he's the, he's he's listed, but he never really said that this is the guy we're going to give the ball to. So very interesting there. Uh, pretty much what we saw, thought all across the defensive side. Um, Mike McNeil's probably going to get some playing time. He's the number two safety right now. Uh, any other? All the freshmen that he started naming, Chris Laura will probably play. Uh, Ryan Pugh will probably see some action. Um, is there any any other surprises at, at, as freshmen that that'll get some change? As far as Ryan Pugh goes, I, I think although Tommy has said that that you know they'd like to play Pugh, I think they'd prefer to redshirt him. You know, I, I think Pugh is good enough to play. If Jason Bosley gets hurt, they'd be comfortable putting him in. But I think Pugh is looking at a similar situation that Mike Berry faced last year, where Mike was a, a second team offensive lineman all season, but didn't get into you know they they like him enough to make him a backup, but you know if at all possible that he won't play. I thought it was interesting that Antoine Carter wasn't on the depth chart. Um, Right now, Antonio Coleman on the left side and, uh, excuse me, on the right side and Michael Goggins on the right side are the only, um, I've got my sides confused, but those are the two backup defensive ends. Right. Um, you know, they're the only backup defensive ends listed. Col uh, Carter, sorry guys, yes. is the uh, is the most natural pass rusher on the team other than Quentin Groves. It's interesting that he wouldn't be listed in one of those spots. I do think he'll, he'll play. Yeah. Um, as far as the as the quarterback situation goes, obviously Brandon Cox is number one. Blake Field was listed as two as the number two. Cody Burns nowhere on the depth chart, but again he'll travel probably dress. Uh, probably won't see any playing time unless something crazy happens. Uh, just impressions going into Kansas State now. You know the the, the hay starting to get put in the barn, so to speak, and and uh, Auburn's ready to kick off at 6:45. They got two more practices Wednesday and Thursday, and then Friday obviously they're walkthrough, and then and then it's go time. Uh, what, where, where, after the practice day, where's Auburn at and, and where are they going to be until Saturday? I think they're where they want to be. I mean, they know, even if they're not saying, they know who their guys are in right. every position. They know what their plan is. They undoubtedly know what their first 15 plays are going to be. Uh, you know, they, they know who Kansas State is. They know what they've, they're they going up against. You know, they're as ready as they're going to get. They're not, you know, I mean, they, this yeah. is where they need to be the Tuesday right. before their first game. And now, really, it's just a question of the waiting game. I, as big as... You know, the first four weeks of practice has been getting prepared for this moment. Now it's not over-preparing. It's not playing the game on Thursday, as, you know, young players have a tendency to do. Now, I think, is where they throttle back and they get these guys to relax and, uh, you know, and, and just be mentally ready. We're such a young team. There's a lot of freshmen that are going to play. So I think it's going to be interesting to see how those freshmen do in a game situation. They'll start and, and see in the second and third and fourth quarter when, when the adrenaline kind of wears off. Where are some of these freshmen going to be like Lee Zim is going to be starting at right tackle? Is he going to be able to play four, four quarters without wearing himself out mentally as well as physically? So it's going to be interesting to see how some of these young guys play. Uh, predictions for Kansas State since we won't be back till next Thursday on Auburn versus. What's next school? Tuesday? Our next Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. We're going to buy my calendar That's next right. week. He's going to get this right. And, and him a depth chart. So uh, <laughs> Tuesday when we're, back, <laughs> we're back, when we're back on Tuesday, what are the predictions for Saturday night's game against Kansas State? I say Auburn wins, uh, a high-scoring affair. I'm going to go, because I always pick scores that are way too high, I'm going to go 34 to 24. Wow. Uh, Auburn wins, covers. <laughs> um, you know, I think it'll be an exciting game. Uh, Auburn has had first-game jitters in the past, as we all know. Uh, I think they'll have some this year, this year too, but I think they'll get by, get, get through it. Auburn, my prediction, Auburn wins about, I'd say, 28-21. It's going to be a little bit closer. I think Kansas State will have a little bit more something for them. We'll see how that defense does for Auburn University. It could be a shutout, but Auburn won't <laughs> score that many points if it is a defensive battle. Again, guys, we'll be back next Tuesday with more player interviews, more, more from Tommy Tupperville's press conference, reactions from the Kansas State game as well. Check us out, AuburnVersus.com, also OANow.com. Read Colin Mickle's blog. Lazy blog, all the stories, all the all, all you could ever want. And then versus, some. And then some on AuburnVersus.com. We'll see you guys next week.